Hi guys, my name is Emma Zrizzoli and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I usually edit my photos using Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. Alright, so before we begin, I just want to say that I hope everyone is staying home and staying safe. Uh, it's such crazy times that all we can do is just stay home and wait it out. But the most important thing is that we're just staying creative and creating things and being productive when we're at home. So over the next few weeks, I plan on making a few more YouTube videos and tutorials just so you guys can stay inspired while we're all self-quarantining at home. So let me know in the comments below what sort of videos you want me to make and what you want to learn from me, I guess. All right, so let's get started. Let's just jump in the computer and I'll show you how I usually edit my photos. So I've already imported the photos that I want to edit into Lightroom. All these shots have been taken using my Sony a7R 4 in RAW. The end goal here is to edit the colours of this photo using Lightroom and then remove the people in the shot and replace them with my wife Lucy. The reason why I couldn't just shoot her in position originally was because we only had 24 hours in Singapore and there was a huge line at the spot, it was like so crazy. So I took a few quick shots of some strangers standing there and then took another photo of my wife at a different spot right next to the main location. I find that it's always good to have an end goal in mind when editing a photo so you can try to achieve it. If while you're editing and you go off on another path and the goal changes, that's okay because things might not work out the way you intended. But in the end, if the final edit is what you like, then that's the most important thing. Okay, first in the Lightroom Develop tab, I'm going to be using the Crop tool to compose this image. When composing, I use the guidelines to help me line things up. You can click O on your keyboard to toggle the different types of guidelines. In this case, I wanted to center the circular skylight thing while also putting the subject on the lower rule of thirds line. Now onto the sliders. So all Lightroom is is a bunch of sliders that change the tones and colors of your photo. So the more you experiment and tweak each slider, the more you understand what they mean and find out what style you prefer. There is no right or wrong answer, it is completely subjective and up to you. The best thing to do is just to adjust all the sliders left and right until you find a point you like. I never really use presets usually because I find that each photo is different and I like to personalize each photo in my own way from scratch. However, I do plan on making a set of presets soon, so let me know if you guys are interested in that. Alright, so for the white balance, I personally prefer cool tones, so I usually slide the temperature left towards the blue and then the tint usually slightly right towards the magenta. But it really depends on the location and photos though. Then I just step through each slider one by one and adjust to my liking. A few things to note is that I like my photos to pop out and have more contrast, so I usually increase the contrast. I also like to bring back the details in the sky and bring down the highlights, but for night photos I usually increase the highlights to get a glow in the lights. For the shadows, I don't usually like them to be fully black as I want to see details in the shadows. Then in the presence tab, to add more punch, I like to increase the texture, clarity and dehaze very slightly up and I also usually increase the vibrance and saturation slightly up too to bring out the colours in the photo. So now moving on to the hue saturation luminance panel or the HSL panel. Again, we're just going to move each slider one by one. I usually like to start with the saturation sliders as this will help with how much of each colour you will be working with. In general, I usually like to desaturate my yellows and greens and increase the oranges, aquas and blues slightly. But in this case, I did the complete opposite because I wanted to mute the other colours and make the green stand out more for the leaves. So it goes to show that editing is very case by case depending on the photo. For the hue, usually I like to push my yellows, greens, blues and aquas slightly left but in this case, the blues look better pushed towards the right towards the purples. Finally, for the luminance, my preference is usually to increase the brightness of each colour so they all stand out a bit more. But just play around with your photo until you're happy with the colours. Next, split toning. So split toning is used to adjust the colours and tones of the highlights and shadows in the image. Because I like blue tones, most of the time I usually adjust the hue to around 100 to 220 in the value for both the highlights and the shadows, and only go as low as 2 to 5 on the saturation sliders. This should give your photos a nice blue tone. When it comes to sharpening, I usually increase the amount to about 70 to 100, radius down to 0, detail up to about 50 to 60, and masking slightly more than detail. Oh, and I also add a bit of noise reduction too, just around 5 to 10. And that's it. I don't really use any of the sliders or the tone curves, as I find what I usually do here has worked well for me. I also like to add a slight vignette to my photos, but we're going to do this at the very end after the Photoshop step when we recolor grade it again. If you don't need to do any Photoshopping, then I would just add it now. Alright, so next I want to copy the same settings to the other images I want to composite together. 
To do this, I just click copy on the bottom left corner and then make sure all the settings are checked except for maybe crop or transform so it doesn't change the composition of your other photos. Then I click the other image and hit paste. Then I just adjust the settings accordingly so the colors kind of match. A good way to do this is to click this button so that you can see the images side by side. Once that's done, right click on the main image, then go to edit and then edit in Photoshop to open the file automatically in Photoshop. Alright, so before we jump into Photoshop, I just want to talk about what Photoshop is used for. So Lightroom is a program where you tweak all the colors, whereas Photoshop is a photo manipulation program. So you can do things simply from like removing people from your photos or removing little dust specks in your photo. Or if you want to add people in your photos, like in this instance, then you can also do that too. So it's all about layering and understanding that the more you use it, the more you'll get to know it. And hopefully on this channel, you've learned a few things along the way about Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you can do stuff from removing little things all the way to composites and lots of different layers and flipping photos upside down, mirroring and all this kind of stuff and motion blur. So all that stuff is done in Photoshop. For me, if I was already happy with the image itself and I've already color graded in Lightroom, then usually the process is done. But in this case, I want to keep going and add to it in Photoshop. So a question I get asked a lot is how long I usually spend editing one photo. And I would say that it ranges from about maybe half an hour to about two or three hours sometimes if it's like a more complicated edit. But you yeah, have a play around with it and keep practicing and, and you'll get better at it for sure. So now let's jump into Photoshop and let's just keep going with this edit. Okay, so now we're in Photoshop. The first thing I usually do is duplicate the image onto a new layer. This will not only create a backup if you make a mistake later or want to bring back something from the original, but also it helps to show the before and after if you want to put that on social media. Next, I'm going to get rid of the people in the image. I've already made a video about how to remove people in photos, so I'll link that up top or in the description. Go watch that one for a full detailed breakdown on how to do it. In this case though, I first tried to use the fill content aware method, but realized it's probably better to just use another photo to cover up the people. So I went back to Lightroom, pasted the same edit onto an empty image and opened that up in Photoshop. The reason why I didn't use that image in the first place was because I liked this angle and composition better. Also, you don't need to have the same exact angle in the empty shot, it just needs to be similar. So I copied the part where I wanted to cover up the people and paste it into the file. Just make sure that you copy a bigger box than you need so that we can just erase that later. Change the layer opacity to 50% and position into place using the free transform and distort tool. And then apply a layer mask on the layer and start painting black with a soft brush which has hardness zero to erase the hard edges. You can use controller command plus or minus to zoom in and out much quicker. Next, I'm just going to tidy up and clean up the photo to remove a few distracting things like the dark openings on the right side of the image. When editing, I always try to keep the image as straightforward as possible for the viewer and try to draw their eyes to the subject as fast as possible and removing large distractions helps with this. First, I removed the little sign on the left by using the content aware tool and then I also tried to also use the content aware tools on the other two parts on the right, but it just didn't look correct. So what I did for the top right was to mirror the top left part of the image and position it into place. To do this, I drag the guideline into the center from the rule on the left and then selected the left half of the photo by dragging a box. Then I right click and select the layer via copy and then use the free transform tool and flip horizontal to mirror it. Move it into place on the right side and use a layer mask to blend it into place. In this case, I thought it would be better to just make the whole layer mask black and then reveal the parts I wanted by painting white. Then I just used the free transform and distort tool to position into place and get the tiles looking right. For the bottom part, I first tried to use the clone snap tool to fix the tile patterns, but found that it was probably better and cleaner if I just copied a part from another photo, just like how we removed the people. So the same technique applies here. You can adjust the brightness and colors to match the main image by using the brightness contrast tool and the color balance tool in the image and then adjustment menu in the top menu bar. Next we're going to bring in the image of my wife into Photoshop. Select the box around her and copy that into the file. Position into place roughly first, we can fine tune the positioning later. Hit the magic wand tool and then at the top there's this cool new feature called select subject where Photoshop uses AI to find the subject of that layer or photo. Once the subject is selected, you can tidy up the selection by holding shift to add or alt to subtract from the selection. The select subject tool is great to get a head start on the selection, but most of the time you still need to tidy it up. Once the subject is fully selected, I then click the layer mask button to remove the background. Now you can adjust the positioning and size, and you could even use the existing photo as a reference on how big the subject needs to be. Roughly select the ledge it's standing on and move that to the top of the layers so that you can adjust the positioning of the subject accordingly. I found that the perspective was still slightly off, so I duplicated the layer 
convert it to a smart object, and then rasterize it. This will create a new layer that doesn't have a layer mask attached to it, so you can manipulate the subject much easier. Don't forget to turn off the layer below it though. Next I just eyeballed the perspective by stretching different parts and using the perspective and skew tools in the free transform menu to position into place. Finally, I tried to match the colors and tones of the subject by using adjustment layers and clipping them down to the layer below. In this case, I used the brightness contrast, color balance, and vibrant adjustment layers, and clipped them down by right clicking and selecting create clipping mask. This will make sure that only the layer below it is affected. The advantage of using these adjustment layers is that it is non-destructive and you can keep adjusting and readjusting until you get it right. Then once you're happy with the tones and the positioning of the subject and you're done editing the photo, just click save and the photo will automatically jump back into Lightroom and Lightroom will create a new TIFF file from it. So now we're back in Lightroom and the final step here to just go back again through each slider one by one and try to improve on the colours. I find that after working on the image in Photoshop for some time, it usually needs to be slightly recolor graded to make the image pop out and stand out more. In this case, I added a vignette and I also added a radial filter to adjust the tones of just the skylight part up top to bring back more of the details in the trees. To export, I just right click the image and click export. Normally when exporting, I just use the default settings at 100% quality JPEG. I save it directly into a Dropbox folder on my desktop and this syncs straight away onto my phone where I can post onto Instagram and social media. And we're done. Check out the before and after. So I hope you found that tutorial useful and you learned something from it. There is actually an editing competition that's happening right now that's being hosted by myself and my good friend Terry um, at Asterisk in LA. We've dropped 25 photos each into a Dropbox folder and you guys can download it and edit it as much as you like. Hit the link below in the description to download all the images and find this Instagram post for all the details. There's some really cool prizes to be won and we've got sponsors such as Adorama, Samsung, Adobe, Hexbrand and DJI. And so you don't want to miss out on this. So get in on it, have fun, stay creative and enjoy the competition. So I hope you enjoyed that video and learned something from it. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.